Hello, welcome to True Hoop with me, Gerard Hector and Coach David Thorpe. How are you, sir? Happy Halloween. Uh, it is, in fact, Halloween. Yes, it is. Uh, are you a big Halloween guy? Were you a big Halloween guy growing up? I have no memories growing up, really, other than when I was in high school, remembering that I couldn't trick-or-treat because we had basketball practice mm -hmm. um, uh, until we had kids, and it was super fun. My wife is – I was just leaving her message this morning. She, she did the house stuff, and so when the kids outgrew it, we stopped doing it a little bit, and then I, since once I went to college, I bought a bunch of like you know dollar mm -hmm. witches and pumpkins, whatever. Right. And so we have my wife's very organized. We have Tupperware for all the different holidays, right? Big gigantic ones. So we've got trick or treat stuff everywhere. We, we have no <laughs> trick or treaters, by the way, because it's a real commitment to get to our front door right. and all of our neighbors. <laughs> so no, we have zero. We used to give out two hundred fifty <laughs> pieces of candy a year. Yeah, and now it's dead zero so we're gonna wow. go somewhere okay bring uh one of my assistants wife's uh gonna have a baby soon so we have a baby gift for her and we'll see their five and seven year old you know dressed up whatever okay and then we'll go out to a nice restaurant and have a nice dinner we're not gonna be home no, no very oh yeah this. you know and yeah. well I, I love it you're like well there's a commitment to get from the street level to our oh, front yeah. door so no nobody's oh, coming yeah. <laughs> no no kids have done the math like if, if, if it takes 45 seconds to get to every front door in the neighborhood I can get, I can go to three houses in 45 seconds in just a regular driveway. So yeah, yeah. yeah no one comes. People are smart. Kids are kids are geniuses. Yeah. I love it. Kids yeah. are smart. They're geniuses. <laughs> and their parents well, are smarter. Happy Halloween to everyone out there. Everybody's safe and uh, enjoys whatever it is they're doing uh, today and, and later on this evening. David, it, uh, you know, we are a week through the NBA, a little, a little more than that, a, a little week plus. Um, so teams are kind of getting into a rhythm now. We're seeing games coming every other night now. Teams have already played back-to-backs. So lots of interesting stuff. Um, a team that has stood out to me has been the Cleveland Cavaliers. Um, obviously, they're undefeated. But they look to me, David, just so much more energized offensively. From a basketball mind and a coach's eye, what are you seeing? What has Kenny Atkinson done to this Cleveland Cavaliers team? So I had not watched them at all until I saw your message. I'll get around to them. I just haven't seen them yet. And so I watched their first quarter. I just, I just literally went to Synergy, mm -hmm. went to first quarter from last night's game against, against the Lakers, Lakers. Mm -hmm. and they scored 42 points. In the Correct. Game. And I'm like, oh, man, this is different. And so then I had a suspicion that what I was seeing, and then I went to NBA.com stat sheet, mm -hmm. and I don't remember anymore because it was three hours ago, and <laughs> lots have happened in the last three hours for me, nothing bad, just crazy. Um, they were either first or second in drives per game, which is what I thought I saw. Everyone, mobile included, except for Jared Allen, looking to drive more, uh, way more than last year. They're playing much faster than last yes. year. Last year, they passed it a lot more. So last year was a more passing-based offense. This year, it's a more, more dribble-drive-based offense, which when you've got Donovan Mitchell mm -hmm. and Darius Carlin is a good thing. And mm -hmm. also, they're given Mobley a lot more responsibility yes. to drive and attack, which I think for his position is good. Mm -hmm. And uh, they're, I think they're number two in defense and yeah. top five in, I mean, and offense. Number mm -hmm. two in offense. Yes. Uh, behind Boston, I think. Maybe number number one on offense might be. It's right there. Um, but it's the driving that impressed me. And also, uh, I think Donovan Mitchell, I'm a, I'm, yeah. I've been a big fan You've for been, a long yep. time. Mm -hmm. He's fucking incredible. Yeah. Just incredible. I don't know what yeah. to do with him. He's yeah. A, he's a running back. Yes. Driving. He can, his shot is just, I think every shot's going in. Beautiful arc. He's a fucking beast, man. Yeah. Yeah, the Lakers had a real tough time keeping him in front of them uh, last night, as many teams do. Um, yeah. And really, right, like that is, you know, you, you wrote a book called Basketball is Jazz. And, and you know, sometimes basketball has got so many complex things going on. And sometimes they're simple things. And one of the simple things is that when you cannot keep your man in front of you and he gets into the paint, that just causes so many problems like on, on the back end right because now everyone's got to help <laughs> that's the whole goal yeah right you're trying to get that first domino to drop which means the other help's got to come that's the domino the help yeah then it's four on three yeah and so 
uh, drive kick, the, the Thunder. By the way, the mm-hmm. two undefeated teams, that's how they play. Correct. In fact, I think they're one and two in drives yep. per game. Is <laughs> the Thunder, you know, we, we are cyclical in our in our league. Not mm-hmm. that I mean, not cyclical, we're a copycat league. Uh, but it was passing, and it's still the Pacers still throw a lot of passes, and the Warriors, a lot of passes. These two teams are built for dribble drivers and play off that. And, um, I mean, Kenny was with the Queens in our last year. That's not how they play. Correct. But he had his own. You, you have to match your system with the talent you have. Yes. Yes. And I think, you know, that interestingly, David, leads us uh, to the next thing I want to discuss. Um, I don't know if you saw this. After opening night, when the Celtics fired up 63s, you yeah. know, talking heads went crazy and lost their minds. The NBA is a shit product. All everybody does is jack threes, jack threes, jack threes. And that is such a disingenuous like point to make. And it also shows, as you often say about people, they have no idea what you're fucking watching. Because yeah, don't. if you watch how the Celtics generate threes versus how the Thunder or the Cavaliers generate threes, th- those three teams, besides the, dr- the dribble drive, they don't do anything similar. It's not, they don't generate threes the same way. Nor like the Mavericks. That's not how they generate threes either, right? Like, it's just this weird thing where the end result might be the same in that someone is shooting a three-point shot, but how we got there is not the same. And for whatever reason, people can't see that with their eyes. They don't, they don't see that it's a different thing because all they see is a three-point shot. And so we've had a number of people talk about we need rule changes, flatten out the arc, get rid of the corner three, uh, I think Bomani Jones said that when Anthony Edwards is incentivized to play like Clay Thompson, the rule, I'm like, but he's not incentivized. Like, it, like, yes, three is worth more than two. And by the way, Anthony is shooting 41% from three this season already, like on 12 or 13 attempts per game. I mean, I'm sure that the Timberwolves love that. And by the way, they need that because they lost Carl Anthony Towns, who was an elite three-point shooter. So somebody's got to pick, pick up the slack there. Um, I just, this conversation around threes, is just to me, it's the wrong conversation. And so I started, my question to you is, does the NBA have a three-point problem? Well, I'm looking something up, so you'll hear why in a Mm -hmm. second. Tell me what you think. I don't think so at all. I think this idea that shots at the rim and the mid-range have been disincentivized is not true, right? If we we did a, uh, Owen Phillips from F5 Substack, had a chart out that charted the last few seasons from 2017 through now. Shots at the rim have basically been stable from 2017 to now. So they're not going down. They're pretty much what they've always been. And mid-range, essentially what we, and Seth Partnow did this in his book, The Mid-Range Theory, all they've done, teams have done is they've moved away from role players taking long twos. Superstars can do whatever they want. And hello, Kevin Durant, DeMar DeRozan, Chris Paul, all these guys live in the mid-range and they shoot a ton of mid-range shots. Like, and it's fine. They just say, okay, role players, you guys step back and take a step back and shoot the three instead because the math works out that way. So I, I, this idea that it's killed the mid-range game and it's, it, I just, it's not true. Not true. I mean, there's so many things I want to say here <laughs> and I got to be careful about this. Because um, so <laughs> you might all, reveal some things you don't want to reveal. <laughs> no, 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 no. Well, yeah, my own opinion. <laughs> um, the the med- the general media it, it it's hard for me to stomach. Uh, you, we were texting a little bit. I think it was last night, maybe mm-hmm. just today. They don't. It, it, it's gotten to the point where they want to be cute and clever and funny and not necessarily accurate. And I mean, sober analysts sometimes yes. are that way now on Twitter, and it's disheartening to me because it's just to me it's not the spirit that they should be fo- following. Uh, as it relates to the way the game is played. They're allowed to have their opinion. It's like, I don't understand when, when you've seen this, and I know you have, is, is, is it okay to have pineapple on a pizza? Like, are you fucking kidding me? Who are you to tell me how to eat anything? Is it okay to put pepper on something? Right. Why is pineapple any different than pepper? I right. don't understand. Right. It, it's, it, this is how we grow, I think, as a species, is, you know, hip-hop is that thing. There's a mm-hmm. book, The Tanning of America. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like, it, it's just, it's taken what we've always done and infused it at, in their words, tanning it, and it's better in many cases, right? So if you like pineapple on your pizza, fantastic. You don't have to like the three-point shooting, but to, but to automatically assume it's the worst product, mm-hmm. that's your opinion. You're allowed to have your opinion, of course. And, and if you want to argue that that's why no fans are watching it, I first have to say, well, how do you really know? 
because mm-hmm. I've seen the thing on ratings. Right. But I also know I've learned from people like you and Ben and Henry, mm-hmm. streaming isn't part of that. Correct. And that's how everyone watches things these days. Mm-hmm. I know this. They all seem to have a lot of followers on social media, these players do. Mm-hmm. I, I've got some guys with million, a million followers on Instagram. Mm-hmm. Um, so Anthony Edwards. Mm-hmm. Is someone making him shoot those threes? <laughs> I, I'm not aware of that. Right, right, right. By the way, he's scoring 30 points a game. That's yeah. what I was looking up. Yeah. I thought he was scoring a lot of points. He is shooting twice as many threes. Uh, the defenses have a choice to make. I think at some point, if he's making 40% of those at 13 shots a game, mm-hmm. they're going to start putting more guys on him mm-hmm. and make him drive more. Mm-hmm. If I keep my gloves in front of my face as a boxer, my ribs are going to get pummeled. If I drop them, they're going to come after my face. This is the, the give and take of the NBA game. I, I, it's really hard to guard these guys. Of course. Because they can do everything now. And, I mean, watching Chet, he, he, he was still so good tries last night. too much. He, <laughs> yeah. Oh, amazing. I still think he tries through a little too much. And the sunglasses after a game, I'm not all for. <laughs> but I talked to an NBA player this week who told me, I love that guy. Because he works so fucking hard. Yeah. And the person that said that to me is someone I totally trust who knows what hard work is because he's done it himself. And so if he wants to wear sunglasses and do a couple spin dribbles, which I think is silly, knock yourself out, Chad. You've earned the privilege. That's how you get better. I I tell players all the time, and I'm going to get to the point on your mid-range too. You got to miss them now if you want to make them later. So you got to try this stuff now. And I say later. It could be later this month, later this season, later in your career. Mm -hmm. You got to fail some. You have to try stuff out. I remember hearing this story from some Raptors players in 2019 when Kawhi was taking some fucking bad shots. And they were like, what? They, I mean, they, they play with DeRozan. They've seen those shots before. Mm-hmm. And they were surprised that Kawhi was taking some of the shots he was taking when he was taking them. And then they got to the, they were upset all year. Not terribly upset, mildly right. upset. Like, what the fuck, man? <laughs> then they got to the playoffs. Oh. And the only shots you can get <laughs> plenty of times were those shots. And they're like, oh, okay. And then they won a championship, you know? So I, I tell my alpha scores, because I have guys from, from A to Z right. in the NBA, like, you got to take them in the first, second, and third quarters too. Now, in October, right. if you expect to make them in May and June. Mm-hmm. You don't, don't have a steady diet of it. Just make sure you do all of it. Don't be afraid to do it. Yeah. Now, two minutes to play in the fourth quarter of an important regular season game. Let's get to our best stuff if we can. If you can't, that's different. So the game, is, you know, I have more issues with how the game's being officiated, right. the inconsistency, the mm-hmm. late calls, the delayed calls and all of that, than I do the job of the coach is to win the game. So give me the rules. So when I, when, I, when I have been asked to run camps, Gerard, all over the world, how many campers do you expect we're going to have? Or, or, or I'm just, sometimes I'll consult for nothing, just mm-hmm. happy to help a friend. How many campers are there? How many basketballs do we have? How many staff members do we have? How many courts do we have? How many uh, uh, translators, if it's a foreign language? Right. Okay. Give me all the information, and then I'll write out your plan for you. Mm-hmm. Okay? It's no different than coaching a game. Give me the rules. Give me my players that have to follow those rules. Right. And I'm going to come. My job is going to the, the best strategy possible to win games. Mm-hmm. So if you want to argue about too many threes being shot, Argue it for the team you care about that isn't winning because you think they're missing a lot of threes and taking too many. Right. But don't tell me OKC is shooting too many threes right. when they're undefeated. Correct. Or Boston setting right. records and all of that. Not right. They've lost one game now. Uh, that, that to me is, I mean, for lack of a better phrase, the hot take. Yeah. To try to be cool. Honestly, like, bro, I don't give a fuck what you say. You don't have shit about this game that I've <laughs> devoted my entire adult life to. Right. So with all due respect, <laughs> say whatever you want. I don't care <laughs> because you don't care about me and my, my sport. Right. You care about your career right. and what you have to say to build your following. That's not the same thing. These are apples and oranges here. So if you want to argue about the integrity of the game, I'm all for that. This isn't that argument. Right. Because it's really hard to make those threes. You and I always say how hard this league is. It's so fucking hard. So I, it's fucking so hard. Damn, and I could go on and on about that. I won't. But to, sh- to see Anthony Edwards be able to shoot like this, knowing what he can do off the dribble and mm-hmm. in the air. Right. And he does those things too. Mm-hmm. But if you give him the three and he's shooting it great, why wouldn't he do it? Of course. 
<laughs> it's ridiculous, man. It, I, it, these guys are ridiculous. It is what, what what drives me nuts about it is that these are people with sizable social media followings, and they are part of the NBA media ecosystem. And again, hardcore fans and and and, and people who are diehards will think differently. But the NBA is always trying to capture the casual fan, right? That's their goal because that's 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 the bigger that's the bigger pool of people. And when casuals just repeat what they hear without, again, watching for themselves, this is the problem I have. You people are with these huge followings are the voice and the and the people who tell the story of the league. And you're telling the wrong story. Right. This is not what is happening. Right. And it's just, you know, we can get into all the different things about why the talent and the skill level in the NBA is at, at an all time high. It is so great. Part of the problem is, is you and I talk about all the time, there's too many, the way it's being delivered, too many fucking games, right? There's too many of them, right? That's a huge part of the problem. And so we're not able to, to uh, create uh, a sense of urgency and like, wow, this game really matters because we got 81 more of them after, tomorrow, right? after that first one. The other thing is how the media, we talk about how the NFL talks about their game on their shows versus how the NBA talks about their game, right? The NBA is, so-and-so is not a leader. It's like, what? Why are we still having this stupid conversation about who is and who isn't a leader versus, oh, why does this team play drop coverage versus, right? Why don't they hedge here? Like things that actually will make your fans smarter, but they talk down to our fans all the time. And it's just, it's so disingenuous and drives me nuts. I think, uh, I, I'm not going to get very political here and I'll be pretty quick, but uh, we've talked before probably a few times on air or off. Um, about Malcolm Gladwell's story of the food marketing expert who was helping um, Prego sell more tomato mm -hmm. sauce. And they, mm -hmm. they realized nobody was selling extra chunky, but a third of Americans prefer extra chunky. Well, I really feel like the, the far right movement in America on the media side was, was a, okay, 40% of the country are right wing loons or whatever you want to call them and whatever percentage it is. And no one's talking to them. So Rush Limbaugh, do your thing and on from there. And I think that's what this is here, is there is a segment of society that wants to hate our players, mm -hmm. that wants to hate our game. And so they're appealing to those people because they'll never win over the real fans because right. they don't know what the fuck they're talking about. Right. They're, they, they know as much about basketball <laughs> as I do about medicine if I watch a doctor show <laughs> once a week on TV on Thursday nights, <laughs> whatever, Grey's Anatomy, whatever, they were kind of watched any of them. So, so. Or the fact that I see a doctor once a year. Right. I, I see a number of doctors right. once a year. So, so that does make me an expert. I know, I know they went to college a lot. Like, I know some basic things. That's all you guys know <laughs> when you played in PE through sixth grade. Okay? <laughs> You've watched it a bunch. You know nothing. Right. And you learn nothing watching those games because the announcers didn't bother to tell you any of the important stuff. Right. They gave you the most basic stuff imaginable. You, I, I had a player. I sent a clip to a player after a game last night that my assistant sent me. Mm -hmm. Very, very smart guy, very astute guy, has worked with NBA players at a high, high level. He worked with them when they were younger, which is a big deal because he organically helped them play much better. You would know all of his clients, all of his students. I sent this to a player asking the question, what was your job here? If I posted his answer on social media, 100% mm -hmm. of the average fan and the average media guy would have no idea what he was talking about. <laughs> Hunt, I guarantee, because it's a terminology and a language they've never heard right. a TV guy talk about. Right. So this is where they are. They can. It's easy for them. It's why a lot of analysts on on media, all they talk about is rotations mm -hmm. because they can't talk about execution and they can't talk about the actual game strategy. Right. They don't know what they're doing, but they can follow who played and who didn't play yeah. and when they played. Yeah. So that they can comment on. Yeah. Great. And I'm not saying they're, they're wrong for doing that. Right. But that's the extent of their knowledge of the game. Yeah. So again, I I believe we're trying to educate people in mm -hmm. our way. Mm -hmm. uh, we want to make it delightful and interesting. I don't think it's delightful necessarily. What I do each day when I send, when I watch 200 clips a day, I don't think people will be delighted by it. Right. I happen to like it very much. Right. Maybe I'm wrong. That's how I see it. <laughs> um, but these guys are playing to a different, or and yeah. women too sometimes. They're, they're appealing to a different person. And it's, it's, disrespectful to our players yeah it who is are busting their ass yes in every way possible yeah to be better at this game and to win games yeah no i, I could not agree uh more with you it's just you know 
I wish again we the the our colleagues in the media would just do a better job, right? Of like talking about how wonderful and beautiful this game is instead of like being lazy, right? Like lazy narratives, right? The idea when Charles Barkley still says to this day, even though he's been proven wrong a billion times, that jump shooting teams can't win championships. It's like, bro, that, that we're, Celtics we're, just won. We we're, <laughs> we're we're done with that, bro. Like that has been buried like a decade ago plus, yeah. like over. Like, it's, but it's just an easy yeah. thing to say. And Charles is a popular play people. So people know he must be right. Right. And then it just turns into this thing. And it's just, it's really, really a shame. Uh, David, one of the more interesting coaches in the league is uh, Joe Missoula. He was in the news this week talking about uh, he's one he's of the problems. Weird dude, man. The NBA has. I'm a fan too. But he's, <laughs> he's clearly a, a very, but he's, um, as, as the kids say, that dude just different. Right, like he's just, he's just a little different, and now he Which thinks I think about great. things. I think and, it's and by the way, yeah. that is wonderful. Like we like that and yeah. need that, right? Everyone can't be cookie cutter the same version and stuff. And actually, I kind of like it because at least he makes it, he gives commentary that's interesting instead of the same old boring stuff. I, I actually quite like it. Uh, he talked this week about how the NBA should have fighting again. He said, "Every other sport is to fight. Why can't we fight? Like it all is how basketball is about power play, all sorts of interesting things." But what I want to ask you is something that was said, and he was talking to the Boston guys, Chris Forsberg and a bunch of others in, in Boston. Um, and one of them had said, you know, the idea of fear, right? There's no fear when you have to go into the lane because there's no hard fouls and none, none of that sort of thing, right? That's all been kind of legislated out of the game. And I want to ask you, David, from a coach perspective, what role, if any, do you think fear should play into the game of basketball? Well, there's two kinds of fear. Yeah. There's the emotional fear of, uh, of losing, mm -hmm. of getting dunked on. Embarrassed. Uh, mm -hmm. There's no physical pain. The emotional right. aspect mm -hmm. of it, embarrassed, right? And then there's the, the other pain. Mm -hmm. well, so by definition, the, the fact that you might suffer some physical pain can necessarily mean that it becomes a permanent injury. And so, if you, so to what I would say, I would never want my child uh, and all these, every single player has a mom and a dad mm -hmm. to sacrifice their, the potential of their health so that people can be more interested in mm -hmm. watching a sporting event. I agree. That's to me is barbaric. I think football has tried to clean up as much as possible. As terrible as football is, that's a very humane gesture. I really value that. I personally value that. People who don't care about other people's bodies don't value that, but I'm not one of them. I think we have plenty of fear built in because these players hate to lose so much. Uh, some of them don't necessarily hate being dunked on or beat because that's the nature of the game. It's like, you can't play baseball if you're afraid to strike out. Right. You're going to strike out, unless you're Tony Gwynn. <laughs> he was just a freak of nature, the oh, freakiest yeah. freak of all time. <laughs> any sport, I'm not sure anyone's ever better at anything than he was at hitting. It's so quite good. extraordinary. So good. So, so fear, Travis is going to love that I said that, by the way, because he's a big <laughs> baseball guy. Um, the idea that we should have players afraid physically is, is talk about going back in time. Yeah. That is an era I hope we never, ever go back to. And as we know and talk about all the time, injuries already are a part of the game. Correct. They're not something to be afraid of. It's just going to happen. But to think that I may get elbowed in the face on purpose right. and, the, and we're okay with that, that's a bridge too far, way too far. For yeah, me. I agree. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not a fan. Can we talk about the other things Missoula said? Sure, sure. <laughs> so I'll take the easiest one first. Yeah. The fighting idea. Right. It's almost, con I think he's joking. Yeah. I really I, think I'm, he's joking. I'm, that's my I guess. I can't believe yeah. he really wants his players to fight. I <laughs> no. know when I was coaching it, when I was 22, I, would, I had kids from the project. If, if, if you're about to get elbowed in the face, hit them first. I quickly changed my tune. I was just trying to fit in with these guys. That was not a good recipe. And, and, and it happened. Um, so I know I don't want to see any fighting. I don't think we're supposed to evolve as a species. The power play thing, mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't want that. But what he's describing is a common drill we play with. So mm. we, have, we all have a drill. Everyone does it. Where it'll be, it'll be, it's called five on four with a trailer. Four on three with a trailer. Three on two with the trailer. Two on one with the trailer. The trailer is someone that normally, there's variations, stands outside the, ti the, the timeline out of bounds. So the half-court line out of bounds. 
So the other team is coming from the full court. When they cross half court at pace, the guy who's out of bounds has to first run and touch the middle of the circle. Trail mm. the play. So you're simulating a four and three, right. three on two, yep. two on one situation. Because it's not permanently that in the NBA, right. Right? five and five game. It's temporarily a man advantage until the, the, the reinforcements come. Right. Like mm -hmm. So defensively, for example, you're taught to prevent the easy rim shot, the, the, the dunk or the layup, whatever, so that they're forced to make a few extra passes so that the help can right. get there in time. Yep. So I don't know how you would do it. I, I don't like the idea. Uh, when he said in the video that you're talking about, uh, so much should just miss the whole possession. Mm hmm uh he thought that was too much right that to me made more sense because it's easier to legislate necessarily mm -hmm. yes much imagine, easier imagine you're supposed to sit out the first nine seconds of possession and right. then run on if they're touching the middle of the floor or whatever like in hockey but what if they come out a second early it's right like, it's just right yeah i i don't i don't love that although we do play hot like hockey in the off season mm. we'll have open gym with no out of bounds just play yeah it's kind of it's just good for them to look the fluidity of the game yep um i'm all for finding ways to make our product better. I think, I think the best idea by far is something they already do in the G League, the one for two, yeah, for three and free throws. I'm all for it. And yeah. I'm a purist of the game, obviously. I've been to doing it as long as I have. Uh, it's way less, way less time on the line, way less mm -hmm. dead time. Mm -hmm. Do it. I'm yeah. all for it. It also means we'll play more guys because you get less of a rest from the free throw line, which is great. Let's play more guys. Like wow. the, the Warriors, Steve Hurt joked last night, He's Lind Lindy, Lindsay, Lindy Waters played so well. I guess I got to play 13 guys now. <laughs> so he, he's joking, but still, um, I think it'd be great to do that. Yeah. What do you, uh, we've talked about some rule changes. How do you, widening the court? We, we talked about that. How do you feel about widening the court? Um, we, we have, I don't want to do it only. I'm not totally against it. I, first of all, it means a lot of courts that are well, now are then being lines. So you have to redo it. And then we got the front courts. seats and all that shit are all fucked up. And well, that's the arena is a separate thing, but yeah. I mean, just from the off season, yeah. these guys can go to any rec center and basically right. still play basketball. Right. It's different if they widen the court. The other reason is just that much more ground we have to cover. How many more yes. injuries are going to happen? Cause we have Correct. to take another step yeah. everywhere. Yeah. I, I think we're doing just fine. It's hard enough to guard guys where it is now. Yeah. Why not only makes it harder because let me tell you something. Move the three-point line of the foot, not going to matter. No, we yeah. practice that all the time anyway. Right. We call them four-pointers. So make them three-pointers. It doesn't matter. They can do it, which means we have to guard it. That's yep. a problem. Yeah. And what about uh, making it uh, the, the three-point line more of an arc so you basically eliminate the corner three? Uh, that's, I, I think I'd love to see that experimented with. I hadn't thought about it. I forgot that I've seen that before. Um, so there's no corner three then. Right. So it's just above the break threes in yep. a sense. Yep. I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not against it. Try it in summer league. Try it in preseason. Yeah. That could be pretty cool. I don't mm -hmm. know that it'll be, make much of a difference, but it'd be pretty cool. Yeah. You definitely can't just hide someone in the corner. Correct. Uh, and so it, the scoring is going to go down. Mm -hmm. But why, why don't we like scoring? I agree. I, I like scoring. <laughs> As do yeah. I. <laughs> I, 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 mean, I like scoring. Listen, I think they should change soccer dramatically. You said that. <laughs> many times over. I, and I have a vested interest in it too. Um, but they don't fuck with that sport. Yeah. Pretty much. Yeah, yeah. So good or bad. Uh, yeah, I don't, I don't know that our – I'm enjoying the games. I'm watching games every night all night. I, I'm enjoying I, the games I very much. It. It, to me, it's fine. I just think it's like people need things to complain about. And then once the, – the canary in the coal mine, David, is once the ratings come out, then everybody's like, ha, told you, right? And they can start their whole disingenuous thing and, like, appeal to the people who already want to hate for whatever reason they want to hate the sport and, and the players for, right? It's just, it's just silly, and I, I think it's unnecessary. All right, folks, we'll be back after a brief commercial break. All right, David, you wrote an article that came out uh, yesterday about the Lakers yeah, and yeah, yeah. how we like um, where their offense is headed and what JJ is doing. Um, <laughs> and they lose two straight. <laughs> Called the two Cleveland first, but it, I mean, and Cle Phoenix. Right, two, yeah. two, two very good teams. So it's not, yeah. you know, the end of the world. Um, but what is it that you're seeing from the Lakers on offense that you're liking, besides the obvious, which is Anthony Davis clearly empowered and doing his thing? Well, that, well, that's, that's <laughs> yes. the, they'll bury the lead. <laughs> He's the best player in the league right now. Yeah, although I yeah. didn't watch last night. So maybe, I, I think at 22 last yeah, night. Yeah, uh, No one else did well. Um, I, they're passing a lot more opposite of Cleveland. They're passing a lot more. Uh, they're defending with some spirit. They got to get much better on defense though. But you could tell their, their care. Mm -hmm. uh, it seems like they're focused on offense first. Uh, Hashimura and Reeves 
again, last night notwithstanding, and connect the rookie. Yeah. Seemed to be shooting with some confidence, which is good. Uh, LeBron's orchestrating, not the same LeBron James. Career low, I think, in usage rates and points per game. Mm-hmm. Um, that's a that's a worrisome thing if he you know if he doesn't raise his game up. AD will help to some degree. I don't favor them to win the West. I don't favor them to be a top four seed in the West. But um, because OKC is so young, I could see them losing again in the playoffs. They've won one playoff series. I'm just not so willing to automatically say that team's going to win. Listen, yeah. Phoenix keeps doing what they're doing. I'll write about Phoenix soon. Yep, they look pretty good. They do. Yeah, they, I like their coach, and they have a guy named Kevin Durant who's really special. He's pretty good. Yeah, yeah, he's yeah. not bad. And, no, uh, they're, they're playing well. I think Tyson Jones yeah. has also helped, right? Like that's a, that's that's been a help sure. to have and someone. Beals looked, Beals yes. looked good. Mm-hmm. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And Booker's amazing. Listen, someone who hasn't played much basketball in the past three years, my guess is I hope you would be healthy and look good, right? You haven't played a whole ton, so you're you're not sort of worn down like like so many other people are. Um, I think with the Lakers, defensively, and it's a big hope to pin anything on any one person, but he's, I think, very good. As when Jerry Vanderbilt gets healthy and is back, I think he'd be a big help for them. That's a big hope. That's a big hope for sure. Uh, I don't know that. I think I think JJ focused more on offense mm-hmm. in the training camp, as my guess, and how they're playing. So that's that's going to take some time. And he and he's got to play Gabe Vincent more. Yeah, coming to the expense of his offense, mm-hmm. but he's a very good defensive player still. I think. But I, I've liked what I've seen when he's played. Um, you, can, you can fix some things that way. There's not much else they can do acquiring anyone. No. They're going to have to figure it out with those guys. But, uh, yeah, I don't think they're likely to win the West. But I do think they're, they, they're, in, they're on the bus because yeah. of AD and LeBron, and LeBron. as a thinker, mm-hmm. figuring stuff out. And they seem to be really listening to JJ, which is great. Yeah. I think, you know, to your point, we'd said, like, you know, I think before when we were three and zero, oh, we said, "Well, talk to me in January after they lose three yeah. straight." And like, might, so, might be October, so, November. So, November. Right, so now <laughs> they've lost two straight. Let's see how are the vibes still happy? All that are we still all good? What's going on there? Uh, question for you as a dad: Did you enjoy Bronny scoring his first NBA points in the arena he essentially grew up in? I mean, I can go back to photos of baby Bronny being held by LeBron after games, like in in that arena. Um, was that a cool moment for you, seeing Bronny score his first NBA points in, in an arena he's been in his I, whole I life? Didn't, I didn't see it. Uh, I didn't even think about that, what you just said, because they've been in L.A. for quite a while. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but I did see, and I don't, that narrative stuff doesn't matter too right. much, but what I did like a lot uh, as a dad was hearing LeBron talk about it. Um, just, you know, LeBron, in many people's minds, will never be Jordan. Those of us that think he might have been a better, had a better career, mm-hmm. we can argue all we want. Right. He's one of the top two of all time, in my opinion. Easy. And I don't say that easily because Magic was my number two for a long time. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I, I just am so happy that he gets to be the first guy to play with his son. Yeah. yeah. And um, I know I felt just walking on Alabama's court right. two weeks ago and seeing my son put his arm, put his hand like on the shoulder. He, my son's 6'3". This guy's 6'4 and a half. He's another guard. And and the way the player was looking at my son, like, teach me, mm-hmm. you know, master mm-hmm. kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My knees buckled. Like, oh, my God, like, he's doing this now. Yeah. So LeBron gets to watch his son do that. And uh, I'm Pretty happy cool. for him. I'm Pretty thrilled. cool. And um, the Lakers have handled it fine. I think so. It's yeah. not a circus. Yeah. Uh, I think he's going to go to the G League is. is my guess. Yep. They said after yeah. this road trip, it's going to start the whole, you know. Yeah, they just they just camped to start Tuesday, mm-hmm. most teams anyway. So that's great. And um. I'm sure LeBron will come into games, which is great. Mm-hmm. He'll probably bring a posse with him. Right, right. And I mean, a posse means right. teammates. Mm-hmm. That, I, the Celtics went to the main games all the time. Correct. And I, I mean, you'd see seven of them on the, on the court. I love that. It's a 45-minute hour drive, maybe. I think that's a good, healthy place for, the team, for the, these teams to have. Yeah. And so, yeah, uh, I'm glad for those fans. Mm-hmm. I'm sure, you know, fans are funny. <laughs> I've heard I've heard an atheist, a very famous atheist named Richard Dawkins speak, where he says, uh, talking to an American, you're American and you're Christian because your mom and dad were born in America. If you were born in India, you would have been a Hindi. Mm-hmm. If you were born in Pakistan, you'd be Muslim. Yeah. Like this is yeah. so for those of you that are living in Cleveland or mm-hmm. the Akron area, you identify with Le- LeBron's son because he his parents were living there at the time he right. was born. Right. That's your connection to him. He mm-hmm. he lived a very different life than all of you. <laughs> yes, for sure. All of you. LeBron didn't. <laughs> his son did. Right. If that's what connects me with him, that's fine with me. Yeah. Uh to me, all that matters is 
of Bronny developing yes. at, the, at, a, at an accelerated pace. Because when you don't develop at an accelerated pace, too many other guys pass you up because they are. Or no one does, but they just keep recycling someone new because you haven't done it in two years. Well, now you're out. Correct. You don't, you don't get a third strike necessarily. We got new draft picks every year, although the Lakers don't have many. Um, so that's what I want. So yeah. we got it. Great. Now just focus on your game. Yeah, I, I, I too. Like you, like you, the narrative doesn't like, and again, I don't have kids, so I don't feel it in that way. But yeah. I am happy for LeBron that he, because it clearly means so much to him, right? As someone whose father was not in his life and present, right? In so many ways, right? He's like an over dad, right? Because he, he didn't have it. He's so involved in Bronny's life. But I, I'm so happy for him that he has that and they're getting to share that. And like you, when the road trip ends and he gets to go to the G League, this is the part I want to see now, right? Will he earn minutes there? How's he going to do? What's going to happen? Like, right. And is he learning lessons and improving? And as David always says, like reference points, like, because everything is like a million miles an hour and you're like a puppy dog with your head cut off. You have no idea what's happening. Does it get better? He, he might have some idea well, because he's yes. LeBron's son. But you're, right. of course, you're right, Gerard. And also, um, I'll add that um, my wife used to work for a, a venture capital firm that the way they made their money was they bought Midas franchises. Mm -hmm. They owned a ton of them in the Southeast, and she was a director of HR. And uh, their big concern was, in America, third-generation wealth, the business is gone. Mm. So they inherited from their dad, who mm -hmm. started with one. My, he, he ran a Maltese franchise, and he mm -hmm. bought it. And then as, as a, it was a brother-in-law and a son, started doing the same thing, and they built a, a nice, you know, big group. Uh, the third generation is not in the business now. They, they actually sold their business. Uh, for plenty of money, I'm sure. Uh, I don't know if Bronny's son or daughter is going to play high-level sports. Right. It seems like Bronny's got a good head on his shoulders. That I value that mm -hmm. a lot. Yeah. Uh, he's he seems like a great teammate. Always has. Mm -hmm. But I've watched. I don't see prima donna in him no. at all. I don't even see it with LeBron. He has his moments. Mm -hmm. He's he's earned those privileges. Mm -hmm. I have no problem with that. I feel like he's raised a good boy that values the game sure and all the good things about it. Yep. I celebrate that. No, it's huge. That's big. And as, as you've said numerous times, we're, we're rooting for Bronny to be a yep. success in this league because that would be fantastic. Uh, David, I think you like what you're seeing from the Golden State Warriors on defense. They're scrambling, man. They're, uh, I think they're leading the league in defense, maybe number two. Uh, hustling everywhere. Uh, Trace Jackson Davis, Kevon Looney, Draymond Green locking it down in the paint area. Buddy Heald's competing. Podziemski mm. drives me crazy, but he <laughs> competes hard as hell. They just beat the Pelicans. I think twice. they won last night. Yeah, yeah twice, two I, games I, in a row. I yep. just went blank. Uh, uh, without DeJounte Murray, it's a very right. different team. Yeah. But they really bothered Zion last night. They were less effective in the first game against him. They guarded him better the second game. They just were tighter. They were laid off him too much. You can't give a guy like that runway like you can't give Giannis runway. Um, this, is, this is what they did secretly. When everyone was talking about the Splash Brothers and yeah. Traymond's ferocity, it was they were yeah. guarding people. Yeah. And then yep. Durant, but they were guarding right. people. Yeah. Uh, so they're guarding people again. That's that's something. Yeah. Uh, the Warriors have been interesting. Um, they are 4-1, and one, uh, playing well. Now, they haven't really played anybody. They have one team nope. that was good. They was the Clippers, right? And they lost that, that game. They yeah. have an interesting road trip um, coming up. Starts off soft with Houston and Washington, right? Games they probably win. Then they got Boston, Cleveland, and Oklahoma City. I'll be very curious to see how they do. Oh, they could lose to Houston, too. Oh, you yes. said Houston, also, Washington. Yep, Houston, yeah, Washington. Houston yeah. is like two and three, but they're yeah. pretty good. They could lose to Houston. You know that. You know. That. Um, and then Washington is, you know, whatever they are. No, but it doesn't, <laughs> but, mean they, it doesn't mean they won't win. Correct. I mean, we'll lose. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. But those three games, particularly against the Celtics, uh, yeah. Cavaliers, and Thunder, I want to see how they look against th those three teams, which are playing right now the best basketball uh, in the NBA. Uh, so yeah, we'll see where where they end up there. Um, David, the we talked about the Thunder last night. They looked really good, fast, spry. Defensively, they were talking about flying around. They were just everywhere. Now, look, let's also be fair. The Spurs are not anybody's world beater on offense. But still, they have a PhD encyclopedia master at offense, and Chris Paul knows what he's doing, right? Um, and the Thunder still were, were excellent. But Wemby, um, it's only been five, four or five games offensively. Is that what you're concerned with him, which, what you're seeing? Yeah. Me too. Do you know how many points he had last night? Six. Yeah, they had a, they had a, yeah, he, he got outplayed significantly. So he, mm -hmm. he looks off to me. I've had one agent say that to me, not one of his agents, that he doesn't look right. Yeah. Um, kind of weak and yeah, not playing with purpose. I mm -hmm. didn't think, um, 
Yeah. Savon Castle, how many points he had last night? No. Zero. Well, that ain't good. The big lottery pick, <laughs> the number five pick, whatever. That ain't good. Uh, OKC had a two-way player, second round pick, yeah. score 12. Yeah, they were. <laughs> Castle scored zero. Everybody's flying uh, on OKC last night. Let me say something. Oh, I, I forget this every year. How when they do their post game TV interviews, yeah, everybody comes on the. Mm-hmm. It's the. I mean, if if I was running an NBA team, that's what I you would, want. I'd be telling my whoever department, including my own family, um, we have to come up with our own way to just bring joy. We could do that, but then mm-hmm. we, then we're just copying OKC. Great, but now let's do something else. Team mm-hmm. breakfast. When when I was running my son's all star team one year, we did team breakfast for games yeah. uh, on on weekends. Mm-hmm. We would bring food in. I have video. I have pictures. It was delightful. Just, yeah. And we won. We won the championship. It was just something to bring community together. Parents came in. The kids had a blast. Like, sports is supposed to be fun. It sure OKC is. OKC has got them. They really almost have a monopoly on it. Although, although if you watch Boston last night versus Indiana, mm-hmm. uh, Miles Turner doesn't play. Nemhard goes after five minutes with some sore knee. They're blowing the Celtics out by 24. Yep. I text. Uh, uh, a person involved with the Celtics. Oh, you guys are probably still win this game. Oh, we're down 24. Just they storm back. <laughs> Indiana struggles to finish games off yep. for different reasons. Tyrese is not anywhere no, back yet. He's not looked good. He's trying and competing, and I'm. I think he's going to get there. I do, but he's not anywhere close to there now. And um, and they fucking tie the game. <laughs> Tyrese had a big a big three to to help set his overtime. Siakam wins the game with a, a two and then a three, but uh. They don't play with the same kind of joy. It's, it's youthful exuberance by the Thunder. The Celtics is sober, yeah. rational, yeah. reasonable, professionalism, and talent. It's still beautiful to watch. Right. They, they're so connected. They don't point fingers. They have a mad scientist that coach I think is great. <laughs> and um, I, I, I still think they're the best team in the East. But OKC has got something going on. And Wemby has got to look at Chet and think, okay, I've always outplayed him the few right. times I've played yeah. him. Yeah, yep. He got me this time. I, sure I did. need to grow from this. Yeah. Um, well, you talk about youthful exuberance. It, it's like rookie Magic Johnson leaping into Kareem's arm after yeah. scoring. He's like, dude, we are not doing this every game. Yes, I am. Yeah. You keep doing that, right? Like, but that's that's the joy of youth, right? That's just how young that that everybody going to the post game. Um, people may not may forget because it's an abysmal year last year. That was the Memphis Grizzlies, right? Uh, two years ago, after every post game, everybody's piled into the into the frame, doing their whole thing, right? It's a joyous awesome. thing. And again, when you're young and it's fun, and and look, winning helps, right? Obviously, when you're losing, you're not doing those kind of interviews, right? But when you're really good and everything's going well, it's great, right? Like dealing with success, right? Like how do you then build on that? And I like what we're seeing from OKC so far. So good on them. Yeah, with Wemby, David, I, you know. Caruso was kind of knocking him around off his spot. And I'm just like, because I know he got stronger. And I'm just like, you're to your point. I, I didn't see the purpose. And he looked a little frustrated at times, too. Like, and I'm like, all right. And look, it's early. We only, it's only been four or five games, like not lose our minds. But I think, um, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll be watching him closely these next 10 games or so to see how he, how he rebounds and uh, picks himself back up. Right. Because as we started the show, I was saying, this game is fucking hard, man. Like, you, you're going to, Get your ass handed to you and shit's not going to go well, but it's how you respond and get better. And I think we both think he has the character and mental makeup to want to be better. And I expect a good team. Team Wemby is good around him. Mm -hmm. So here's a quick thing on OKC, just to throw it in there. They're undefeated. They're playing great. Uh, Alex Caruso, very important. Yes. Uh, Do you know what he's shooting from three so far? 45%. Do you know what he's averaging from the field? I'm sorry. How many points he's scoring a game? Mm, 13 i would have guessed very similarly had i not been watching them yeah so he's averaging one point a game <laughs> and he's one for nine from three wow and they're undefeated well yes, he's that, playing the defense you that described, shows you right and and he just hasn't yet figured out right his shot whatever right but i think he's going to not worried about that that's a scary thought yeah yeah there, he's a net. I haven't looked at the plus minus, but um, over the overall, but he's for sure net positive. One one point three points per game, eleven percent shooting from three, and they're smoking team. But I'd that, be worried if I was the rest of the league right now. So we started our conversation about people not knowing what they're watching. That is a perfect encapsulation right there, because a normal person would say, "Well, how can you have someone that plays so many minutes that only scores a point a game, not making any shots? How, yeah. how are 
Yeah, because it's not just about scoring points. Like, how are you imp- – I mean, you watch. We know we watch Caruso. Disrupting passes, turnover, like all the things he does. Like, it's incredible, which I don't know if you saw this stat. Um, do you know regular season and postseason combined, the last three years, who were the top three players in the NBA in total plus minus? I didn't see it, no. Okay. Nikola Jokic won, shock of all shocks. Jason Tatum, oh. two. Not, also not surprising. He knows number three. It won't be surprising to you, but I bet it will be surprising Wait, to people. team? Boston Celtics. Last three years? Mm-hmm. You, it, Tatum was number two? Tatum was two. It's not Jalen Brown? No. True Holiday. Derek White? True. Uh, Drew wasn't there three years, was he? No, but it's, 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 it's their players, that their total for three oh, years. Oh, I see. He's on yeah. the Celtics right now. But no, yeah, of it's course the, it's not a surprise. No, nah, he's fucking amazing. But to people yeah. who don't watch basketball, I bet seeing Drew Holiday is three or who watch but don't understand they're like how is you holiday up at the yeah because it's when not I, when i tell young players <laughs> it's like you got some drew holiday in you they don't they don't they, they should don't get it they should hug me for five days straight yes <laughs> no i i remember i told you i told tyrese maxi who i've yeah. never talked to since kyle lowry he's like lowry yeah, the guy made 30 million dollars yeah i mean what do you now you're better than lowry but <laughs> but you i don't know if you'll last as long right yeah you'll make plenty of money because the league's very different now right Lowry would make six hundred million if he was playing now. Oh my god! <laughs> like the value yeah. of these players again. Like I, I know hammer dunking and all. It's all we love all those things, but I'm telling you, you're not winning unless you've got Lowry's, Holidays, Derek White's, like the Alex Caruso's. You cannot win without players like that on your team. It just doesn't happen. Like I don't know what to tell you. You, you gotta, you know, it used to be wars were won with hand to hand combat. And uh, that's exactly what I tell all my rookies. You have, to, you have to fight at the point of attack. Because if you don't, you're going to be targeted. You're going to get two fouls right away because you're a rookie and the refs give you nothing. And the coach has to take you out. And defense is at its worst when the other team's in the bonus. Yep. And so if you come in late in the first quarter as a rookie and you foul, well, now you're giving them two points potentially every time you foul. If you start the second quarter and you foul quickly, well, now the other team is getting the bonus when the starters are back in. Mm-hmm. You're screwing the team either way. So you got to be able to defend the point of attack with toughness, warrior spirit without fouling. And if you can do that, you got a chance. And man, do those guys do that well. Caruso and Drew are like the <laughs> among the best in They're the world the at that. Yeah. They're so yeah. good. <laughs> Nobody runs a, 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 a ball screen to get one of those guys on them. Yeah, that's, that's correct. Yeah, you're you're never trying to follow. Let's get Drew on me. No, no, no. Nope. How do I get him no. off me? Is what you're trying to do. Yeah. I remember <laughs> I told you this last year when I was breaking down Pacers versus Celtics. I started studying Siakam versus Drew, and I felt like one possession where Drew stopped him. Every other time Siakam scored, scored. I'm like, what is going on here? Nobody scores on Drew Holiday that way. Right. He's a six nine, super long guy. Mm-hmm. It's very hard to score on these dudes. And, and someone beat uh, Drew badly last time. Might have been Matherin. And who had 30 in the game and drew just kind of did his chest like oh, mm-hmm. i got beat there i think they're i don't think they took it as seriously the celtics until it was too late yeah, yeah. they still came back and they still almost won back they still almost won they had, had a lead yeah yeah no they're um they're a special group yeah they are all right well you know what time it is top five time i hope you did your homework this time and you got your five teams <laughs> I what, I, right. what i'm doing now i think i've told you um i'm i have a sort of japanese uh Japanese, oh, yeah, you uh, did. Yes, you did mention that. Yeah. So I, I, I have lots of different calendars that I use to just kind of keep my life organized. But I, I, this is a daily thing. I'm not using it as a diary so much, but I can track what I'm doing each day on it. Uh, so I'm going to do it here every Thursday because it's a regular calendar. Mm-hmm. So I can kind of see how my teams are trending a little yeah. bit. I figured I'd try some different. All right. Who well, you got in your number five, five line? Number five for me, I, I, it's a tie. Uh, right now I have the Mavericks there. I could, so do I. I, have, I could easily have my, so you're number five, okay. Mavericks, yeah. Yeah, Dallas, not only they look great, they look good. Mm-hmm. They look great, they look good. Yeah. I've got Golden State number four. Ooh, see, Golden State did not make my top five because they haven't played anybody. I'm telling you. Um, so, Suns are on my, my four line. I have no argument with that. But I do have some argument. I think Golden State <laughs> should be on number four. <laughs> not really, though. Uh, three line. So, you have Boston number three. I have Cleveland number three. I do not. You I have the Cavaliers. I have the Cavaliers number three. Holy shit, fist bump. <laughs> fist bump. Very the good. Three. Yeah, they're, they're undefeated, but I think Boston's deserving of number two. Yes, as and do I. I. Think, I think OKC is, yeah. Correct. Yeah. Yep. 
Right there, we, listen, buddy, right there. David, we, we've been doing, I don't know how many podcasts we've done together. Like we're, we're of the same mind right now. So it's, it's, it's all good. <laughs> yeah. I, I would think the top four, most people would have. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Maybe, you know what? I thought a lot of teams could be at number five, but Dallas deserves it. They, yes. They, they've lost one game. They lost the one to, to Phoenix, which is why I had Phoenix ahead of them. Oh, Phoenix. I was like, no, no. They lost to the Clippers. No, no, Phoenix. Phoenix no, that them. was, that was Golden State. Right. They yeah, lost yeah, to Phoenix. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And Phoenix could be right there. Yeah. They have two losses though. Uh, no, Phoenix has only lost once. Really? Yeah. Man. Yeah. Good for Phoenix. They're playing well. All right. No, that's I, good. Yeah. And the Thunder, look, and remember, Hartenstein, is, he hasn't suited up yet. And, you know, we talked about we, what his fit's going to be and all that. Is it just keeping away from other teams? Like, so well this team's playing. And the, the, one of their big free agent acquisitions is not even on, on, on the playing board yet. And Alex Cruz isn't even shooting well yet. I, listen. No. He's not even shooting badly yet. He's shooting <laughs> He's shooting badly. Yes, correct. Two, two of nine is bad. He's one of nine. <laughs> one, two points a game is bad. He's one uh, point a game. Uh, correct. He's not even anywhere near the realm of bad offense yet, and they're right. still doing what they're doing. He hopes so. to one day. He hopes to one day just be bad. <laughs> imagine how good they'll be when he's just bad. Oh man, this is. And imagine how good they'll be when he's how he normally is. Like, well, look out. <laughs> yeah, you, to, 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 we'll finish it this way. Uh, Someone needs to punch them in the mouth, uh, metaphorically, Joe, not literally, mm-hmm. Missoula, because um, they're having a great old time. They they're sure are. They're just having fun. Mm-hmm. And uh, they actually, it'd be good for themselves to go through a two or three game losing streak. Of course. Yeah, because it's easy street for them right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and Shane's and, an amazing. Oh, God. As he's... your best player, he's just so chill. And he, you know oh, how we talk about this all the time. Players know when the game slows down. David, he just goes at his own pace and gets to his spot every single time i'm like all right well it's fine like they're gonna he's do what the, they do he's the one reason why maybe i'm wrong to say that they aren't gonna win because i do think he'll be amazing in the playoffs this year he went through last year it is what it is he's got some teammates that are playing better improving mm-hmm. growing experience yep. Jalen williams especially chet too man yeah. chet if, of course if this chet yeah. thing is real that we're seeing well i think it's real that it can shoot three score inside and run the floor and block shots um, I don't know if he's a if he needs to be the shot creator he thinks he needs to be yeah. for this year's team. Right. Let Jay let Jay Dog mm-hmm. Jay Dub whatever they call him and Jay do that. Do that, yes. But I, I'm I'm with you. They have the assets to get somebody else too. I know that's what that's what's all the, scary. That's yeah, what's even scary. Plenty of players about and picks they can trade to get one other guy if they feel like they need it, and that's a big deal. <sighs> yeah, no, it's huge. All right, folks, enjoy the NBA tonight, the rest of the weekend, and we'll see you next week. Take care.